Hey there guys, Eli again coming at you from OSA in Coventry here today to talk about a cool member of the cleanup crew for saltwater aquariums. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, sea urchins. So I have a couple different, actually three different species of sea urchins available at the Coventry location right now. And I figured I'd give you guys kind of a rundown on what to expect with these guys. So in this tank here, I've got a pincushion urchin, which is kind of one of the more common species that you're going to run into in the hobby. These guys are a really good cleanup crew member. A lot of times they will help out with uh, filamentous algae, hair algae, turf algae in your tank. They're a very good grazer and they do move around the tank and pluck these algae off of the rocks. This one right here comes in a kind of cool shade of pink. He's a really pretty uh, urchin. However, these are not always the most reef safe urchin. They are definitely a reef safe with caution species as a lot of other urchins are. Although they are a good algae grazer, sometimes they're very non-selective and they may end up nipping corals as well. In my experience, I have seen zoanthids get eaten by pincushions and on occasion you hear of stony corals being eaten. And especially with the varieties like this one that's kind of uh, pink in color, a lot of times uh, their coloration kind of comes from their diet and it seems like the pink urchins kind of prefer coral and algae which in some tanks does end up being a nuisance, kind of growing all over the glass or growing a little too quickly on overflows. So if that's the case, maybe picking one of these guys up will help because they do scrape this right off the glass or right off your overflows pretty well. However, some people do prefer keeping the coralline on their rocks. And for that case, maybe this guy wouldn't be the best option. In addition to the pin cushion, I also have these pencil urchins up here, which are really cool. A lot of people say that these resemble a navel mine in appearance. They're kind of a funny looking critter. So in comparison to the nice small spines that the pincushion might have, uh, the spines on the pencil urchin are very long and very thick. This does make them a lot of times a little more reef safe because these spines will actually lift the urchin's body off of the rocks. It makes it more difficult for them to um, latch onto corals or, or other things that you don't want them eating because they're just a little higher off the bottom. It also makes them a lot less likely to pick things up and carry them around. So with the pincushion urchins, a lot of times these guys, as they move, will kind of grab stuff off the rocks or just grab small rocks and rubble shells off the bottom. I mean, kind of carry these around and that can get a little bit annoying if you keep, say, frags on the bottom of your sand bed. Whereas with the uh, pencil urchins, this is usually not, uh, not the case. Again, these are reef safe with caution. It is possible that these guys will also munch at corals on occasion. They are also pretty likely to eat coral and algae. Um, but they should help out with hair algaes, uh, turf algaes, and those sort of things as well. So we do have these tuxedo urchins, which happen to be one of the smaller species. And this guy is generally regarded as reef safe. It is probably the best bet to go with in a reef tank. Not only is it the smallest of the options that we have available, they generally do leave corals alone. And unlike the pin cushions, these guys may pick things up, but they are not nearly as prone to covering themselves with shells or rock and moving things around the tank so they become a lot uh, easier in that respect. They should leave most of your uh, frags alone in the sand bed. So as you do see, this one does have a couple shells on his back. He has been moving stuff around in this tank, but just in comparison to the pincushion urchins, they tend to leave stuff alone a lot better. These guys are one of the better options for grazing, say hair algae or turf algae. They will also eat any sort of films that will end up on like frag plugs or on your rock work. So they're just kind of a very generalist uh, grazer. They should help keep your rocks nice and clean. And as the smaller option of the urchins, uh, they really fit in a lot of setups and they can get kind of in a lot of the nooks and crannies that some of the other urchins are not going to. And these guys are almost always regarded as entirely reef safe, but with the other urchins in mind, it might also be smart to kind of just, just err on the side of caution when adding an urchin in general to your tank because they do always run the risk of, of nipping at corals. As always, thank you guys for watching. Let us know if you have any comments or uh, suggestions in the comment section below and keep on reefing.